Hey, Dave. Hey, Athena. How's it going? <laughs> Pretty good. How are you? Doing all right. Hey, I've got a question for you. Okay. Have you been zombified by the idea of creating a television channel in the zombie apocalypse? I, I have, but in that way that like motivates the zombies to like run really fast, you know? How about you? Uh, I, I've been completely zombified by it and um, I'm not really sure if it's me or some other forces that are driving me to just, you know, be so enthusiastic about creating this alternate universe where there's a television channel in the, in the zombie apocalypse, but that's where I'm at right now. So, so tell me, tell me about Channel Z. What is it? So the idea for Channel Z is basically that it is the world's leading zombie apocalypse channel. I mean, huh? it's the only one at the moment. So <laughs> hey, I think we that can means claim. it's the best. Yeah. So, <laughs> yeah. And, um, and the idea is, you know, the apocalypse is going on outside. And so you can experience the apocalypse from the safety of your living room. So it kind of speaks a little bit to the current situation that many of us have been in where um, much of how life has worked for us as academics for a long time. Um, has changed really dramatically. So we're, you know, having a apocalyptic experience from safety of our living rooms or offices or um, wherever our setups are for um, being on Zoom all the time. Our, our um, bunkers, our, our little underground bunkers. With our, <laughs> that's right. With our cans of rations. So. <laughs> <laughs> so, so we've got um, a couple of shows on Channel Z that we have planned. So one of them, is a show called Undead Live. And it's basically a news show. It's kind of in the style of like a cable news channel where there are kind of updates about um, what's happening in the zombie apocalypse. And uh, sometimes we'll be streaming uh, talks, um, short talks from people sort of in the kind of cable news style with ticker tape below. So it'll be very diverse, but the thing that sort of ties it all together is this idea of zombie scholarship, scholarship around zombies and zombification, um, and also the apocalypse. Sounds pretty creepy and fun. Yeah. Uh, and then, oh, and then we'll have to be prepared for all these terrible scenarios, right? And so, uh, so tell me about the Go Bag Challenge. Yeah, so the Go Bag Challenge is one of my favorites. Uh, it is like a cross between uh, American Idol and Doomsday Preppers, essentially. So we have contestants that submit their go bags ahead of time. Um, and Emily and a panel of expert judges who will be people from both um, the humanities and other disciplinary areas that are relevant to um, prepping, like survivalism and such, um, will be evaluating these go bags, um, not just for sort of whether they have the key essentials for survival, but whether they really reflect um, an understanding of the ecological, social, political vulnerabilities that um, that particular person may be encountering due to how they're enmeshed within their ecology and you know where they live exactly and sort of all these other contextual factors so it's going to kind of provide a lens for us to address all sorts of really interesting and deep issues about how we as humans um, deal with crises you know, in an environment that we ourselves have created. So our tagline for the show is apocalypse meets the Anthropocene. Making a, a sustainable apocalypse. A so. sustainable apocalypse. Yes, that's, uh, that's definitely part of it. And, and tell me, who is Emily Zarka? Emily Zarka is a professor of literature at ASU, and she is also the host of the PBS show Monstrum. So um, she has extensive experience already with scripting shows and hosting television programming. Cool. Oh, then after that, people can relax with a little late night brains, right? <laughs> That's right. So late night brains is essentially our video adaptation of the Zombified podcast, which you and I have been hosting since last year, about this time we, we launched it. Yep. And, and so with the Zombified podcast, really our goal has been to create this long form kind of 
um, platform for people to have conversations about zombification, you know, both how these zombification processes affect us as humans, what kind of influences there are from technology and biology, and what it means for our futures and what we can do to kind of, you know, preserve our autonomy, if that's what we choose to do, and um, kind of, you know, confront what it is about zombies in the apocalypse um, that um, are, are so compelling and, you know, how they, they reflect something about where we are as as humans at this point in time and so so we'll have what sort of guests will we have on this show so late night brains will feature humanity scholars scientists artists um, creators of all sorts and the idea is really to bring people together um, to have these conversations um, in you know where we can go deeper um, than than we can with undead live or um, with the Go bag challenge um, because you know undead live is going to be much more sort of quick short form news style um, and go bag challenge is you know going to be um, presenting a lot of interesting and important information but framed much more in terms of this um, competition so late night brains is a little bit more of a you know relaxed way of having these deeper conversations cool. and then for people who are up after late night brains, then we get to our midnight movies, right? And <laughs> yeah, so we have brain dead theater next. Uh -huh. And uh, yeah, I, I spent a lot of my um, youth um, watching Mystery Science Theater 3000, which is this, I thought it was quite brilliant conceit. You, you take these, you know, um, these old movies and then you layer commentary and comedy upon them um, so that you're both getting the experience of this movie and you're getting the sort of commentary and fun um, comedic interpretations at the same time. So the idea of Brain Dead Theater is to take this same kind of approach, um, but with zombie movies that are in the public domain. And, and instead of having a couple of, you know, robots commenting, <laughs> we're gonna have scholars commenting on, on the movies. And so you know, basically the movie will be screening and then um, we'll have two hosts and uh, a special guest um, who has expertise in that particular movie. And um, they will, you know, watch the movie together and you know they'll pause it if they have a something extensive they want to talk about or they'll talk over it and we're we will edit that all together um so that it is a you know experience of sort of you know watching uh, a film while having expert commentary and um and it'll be fun too because we'll really have a chance to you know bring these um voices, um, these scholarly voices into this much more sort of um, engaging and interactive sort of platform that really playful, playful and jokey. So, exactly. Yeah. So yeah, cool. So people probably won't even realize how much they're learning. That's right. And then, yeah. but then for people who do want to learn how to survive in the apocalypse, we've got, we've got the Dr. Zed show. Yes. So. <laughs> Dr. Zed is uh, essentially a narrative medicine show um, where basically these stories about zombies and the zombie apocalypse are the frame for discussing survival strategies, for discussing emergency and wilderness medicine, and um, thinking about, you know, really how, how we can take these um, these stories and use them to motivate us to be more educated and more prepared. And for, for us, it's a really fun way to engage in the, um, you know, what, what can be maybe a little bit intimidating kind of information, right? About like, how do you dress a wound? How do you amputate a leg? Like these, you know, things are, um, you know, pretty heavy, heavy topics, but by framing them in terms of the zombie apocalypse and, you know, surviving, um, it, it, it makes it a lot more fun. And it also is, is a great way for us to bring storytelling in and um, showcase how narratives can 
um, can really help us, you know, organize the way that we think about the world and respond to it. Plus, if people at home need to amputate their leg, then then they'll know, you know, it's useful. So <laughs> that's right. Just in case uh, you, you end up in that kind of situation, <laughs> you know, in the apocalypse, you never know. So exactly. <laughs> so, um, so then uh, I imagine, you know, amputating your leg would probably leave you rather hungry. So uh, then we've got <laughs> our cooking show. Yes, our cooking show, Eat, Pray, Run. Note the pray spelled with the E because mm -hmm. um, ultimately, you know, biologically speaking, uh, we can be prey just as much as predators. And that's something we have to consider when we're, um, when we're you know, out foraging or, um, you know, gathering food or even preparing it, so. Uh, and so now, one thing that I think has been really interesting when we've talked about Eat, Pray, Run is we sort of will be talking about ways you can create meals, both from things you'd sort of forage in the wilderness, but also from things you could find like in the city, right? Because we've sort of talked about some of the issues with like food deserts and things like that. Oh. Yeah, yeah. So we see Eat, Pray, Run as a, um, a cooking show that allows us both to kind of address survivalist cooking and, you know, how, how you would survive in the wilderness, but also to engage with, you know, some of the issues that do happen in urban environments where um, people sometimes don't have access to produce or to fresh foods. And so it, it provides a framework where we can, you know, address both the you know, kind of fun side of like, you know, how you would survive in the zombie apocalypse with food and, you know, how do you ferment and, and things like that, um, but also engage with the reality of, you know, what eating is like um, for many people and the, you know, somewhat apocalyptic conditions that sometimes exist in our very cities in terms of food deserts and such. So it's a, uh, you know, it's a wide ranging kind of show that um, will allow us to engage with all those questions and, and also think about, you know, how food and eating and sharing food are important parts of what makes us human. And, you know, like a bunch of my research on sharing and small scale societies, like we see that all the time. That's just part of how small scale societies work is people share food. So we'll be able to engage with you know, the sort of human side of eating, as well as, you know, looking at techniques for food gathering, food preparation, and, um, and you know, the, the process of, of eating together and what that means for being human. Cool. So now, how will people go about watching these? Yeah, so all of the shows for Channel Z are going to be um, accessible at channelz.org. And basically, if you just, you know, click on the images or the text for each of these shows, it'll take people to a separate page that is just for that show um, and that has the episodes on there. Um, Channel Z will be, um, will we'll keep our, um, videos on YouTube um, and then um, so YouTube will host them and then they will be embedded within Channel Z and and this will allow us a couple of things so one is that um, people will be able to find us just directly on YouTube um, and we'll be able to build a YouTube channel um, but it also will allow us to integrate with ASU Ed Plus to um, potentially provide information there as well um, and on top of all of that, we're planning on um, using multi-streaming to um, have sort of watch parties across lots of platforms at once where we'll show um, you know, many shows in a row over Facebook Live, Instagram Live, um, uh, YouTube Live, um, uh, and there are a bunch of other ones like um, Stitcher and such where you can, you can stream it. So you can stream it at the same time across all these platforms. So we're hoping to create a sort of shared experience watch party kind of um, environment as well, occasionally as we are releasing these episodes. So even if people are trapped in the safety of their own home, they can maybe feel like they're not totally alone. Yeah, yep. You can, you can be with others in the zombie apocalypse by watching Channel Z together.
Well, I can't wait to dig in. So thanks for uh, sharing your brains. My pleasure, Dave. And thanks to all of you for sharing your brains with us for this walkthrough of Channel Z.